Hey everyone, this is Bathmetrics, and in this video we're going to cover part two of my mini-series about audio editing in the newest Bitwig 3.2. In this video we're specifically going to cover uh, the difference between track mode and clip mode in the editor windows. So if you haven't yet seen part one, please look in the description for a link to part one. Uh, a lot of things I'm going to say here won't make sense unless you've seen and heard all the big picture stuff I demonstrate in part one. All right. So both of the event editors have a track mode and a clip mode. And if we look at the big editor, it's the same thing here. Here's track, here's clip. So this is definitely another source of confusion for people who are new to Bitwig. Why? Why are there two different modes? What's the point? It's very confusing because they seem to have a lot of the same things in them, but there's subtle differences. So let's look at this a little more closely. Track mode has clips and then these four things that relate to audio events. Whereas if you're in clip mode, the clip button goes away and by default you're working at a level that they call audio events. Um, so first let's talk about some rules of thumb for why you would want one or the other. Okay, it's really pretty simple. It's not nearly as complex as it might seem. The first thing to understand is that if you have a clip in the launcher and you open a clip from the launcher, like let's go back to the regular insert channel. If I double click this to open it, there is no choice between track or clip mode because the launcher always operates on, you're always looking at one single clip, right? There's no notion of having several different clips on the same track, like there is over in the arranger. It's just one clip at a time, one clip per slot. So by default, when you click on a clip in the launcher, it's always in clip mode by default. So this little, set of selectors here just goes away. You're always in clip mode when you work in the launcher. You can only work with the things you see in clip mode. But if you're over in the arranger and you select a clip, now you have a choice. Do you want to work in clip mode or track mode? Uh, the track mode is most useful for seeing two different clips at the same time or more, you know, depending on how far you zoom out your project and therefore allowing you to mostly, the purpose of this is mostly to be able to get an audio event from inside one clip into another clip. So for example, if I drag this in and drag this audio event over here, I can now make a combined clip, a single clip that has two completely different samples inside of it, two completely different audio events, okay? This is the main purpose for track mode, pure and simple. When you want to manipulate all the events that are inside a single clip, or when you want to swap events back and forth between two clips or whatever, okay? It's the main purpose for track mode, to manipulate events inside of clips and, and combine and, and cut and chop and slice and reposition and do all that stuff like we showed in the last video. Now, the purpose of clip mode mostly revolves around the behavior of clips in the launcher, and it mostly revolves around the notion of a clip offset or a start for the clip versus how the clip loops and behaves when it loops. So let's look at this first in a slightly more confusing context, which is looping in the context of the arranger. What I have here is a four bar drum clip. Let's hear it real quick. So at the very end here, there's a little turnaround. It's a four bar clip with a turnaround at the end. There's this little tiny fill and it's meant to loop around really nicely and have this little turnaround telling you where the, where the four bars have ended, okay? And you're starting in on a new iteration. So by default, 
If you come down here and use the gesture, we'll, we'll talk more about this gesture in another video. But if I use the gesture that loops the clip out, right, repeatedly, I can get three successive uh, loops of, of this thing in one go. And on and on and on, right? It's very handy. It's a lot easier than having a clip and then doing Control D several times and then always having to think of it this way. It's a lot easier to see them as looped clips uh, and understand that when you're looking at a big segment of clips, you're looking at a bunch of loops, right? And it's all one clip. And if I edit this clip, I'm really only editing, even if I'm in track mode, notice that it's just really the one clip. And if I make any changes to this first part here, like if I drag in the interior event, it automatically changes for all of the looped sections too, right? Uh, and if I do something slightly more interesting, like let's take this one hit here and split it out. See, it splits it across all three of the loops. And then I could come in here to this event and I could do event, reverse, and I could flip that one drum hit around, right? And when I do that, it's been flipped around in all three of the other loops too, right? So it's, it's a very useful shortcut to do this looping and therefore only have to really work with the first instance of the clip in the, in the very first part before it starts looping, okay? Let me undo all those things. Um, so <clears throat> that's looping, that's why we have looping, that's why you might want looping. Now I'd like you to notice another thing. Um, when you select a clip <clears throat> in the Arranger view, over in the Inspector, the top half always talks about the clip level of things and properties or attributes of the clip. And then down at the bottom, we see the attributes of the interior audio event or events that are inside the clip. So again, if I drag in a slightly different clip and maybe expand the border of this a little bit and then drag this event inside here. And then because I have squished this event up, we're gonna have to find where it starts and ends again. We'll talk about this in a minute in this video, but there's the full event. So if I've got these two events in here, and let's get this border in one more time. Maybe drag this out to here just so things line up. So I've got a clip with two events inside of it. And <clears throat> if I select the clip and we look in the arranger, you can see that there's here's all the clip properties up here. But down here now it says audio events two. And it's showing me that right now by selecting the parent clip container, it realizes there's two different audio events in there and it kind of limits the amount of things I can do in the audio events because right now they're effectively multi-selected because I selected the clip parent, right? But if I come down here, watch what happens right here when I click one of the events inside the clip. See how now I get a, a much more uh, robust set of parameters I can mess with, right? And if I click this one, we have different properties between the two events. So again, this is where that confusion between clips and events comes in and understanding the inspector, right? Depending on what you've selected, I can either select the entire clip up here and see the full clip properties, or let's say I'm looking at this event again and there's no clip properties up here anymore. But if I click the alias, bar that represents the clip on the track that I'm in track mode. If I click this, we can get back to the arranger clip properties this way too. But now again, my focus is on the clip. So it's back to showing me sort of the parameters that are safe to change for both of the events inside the clip, okay? So again, once you really wrap your head around the difference between events and clips, all of the behavior you see over here becomes a lot more obvious and consistent, right? Okay, so let's get back to our default state. I'm just gonna undo until we're back where we were. Okay, so we have a four bar clip. 
and let's double click this to zoom in down here. And I haven't zoomed up here, so let's use our zoom trick up here too. I'm gonna just press Z. And then see how when I select, when I put my cursor basically on 1.3 here and click to the header, it jumped me down here because of that synchronization, right? It's a little annoying sometimes until you understand what's happening. But again, if, I'm, if I clicked over here for some reason and dragged this clip around, and then I want to refocus everything down here, again, I can just double click real quick and that'll snap everything back to the full span of the clip. Okay. So, track mode is for viewing and editing and mixing and matching and chopping and slicing and reversing and doing all sorts of things with the audio events inside of clips and being able to clearly see where the clip itself starts and ends, right? See, I've got a bunch of blank space here now because there's nothing inside of it. Being able to see where the clip starts and ends and also being able to clearly see the events inside the clip and their relationship to the start and end of the clip container, right? That's what track mode is for, swizzling audio events around. Now clip mode is really all about what's happening up here in the ruler section, right? Down here, the audio event looks exactly the same as it does in clip mode. Right? Same behavior, same content in the inspector, same set of things from the audio events, a button and downward into the expressions or properties of this audio event. Right? But in clip mode, that whole time based arranger style ruler just goes away. And instead, we're seeing a set of controls up here that have to do a start and end of the clip and the looping behavior of the clip. This gray bar here represents how the clip is going to loop. So clip mode is all about looping behavior, pure and simple. And that looping behavior is applicable both in the arranger and of course in the clip launcher because usually you want clips up here to loop. When you hit play, you want them to just keep looping over and over. The question is, how do you want them to loop? Where do you want it to start playing in the sample or clip or event? And where do you want it to loop from after it's started playing that first time? And where do you want it to stop playing, right? So, for example, uh, let's just close this now. We're back in the arranger. We're looking at this clip. It's a four bar clip. If I drag this marker in, it's effectively the same thing as if I were in track mode and dragged the alias for the clip container itself inward, like so, okay? Control Z to undo. If I go back to, if I do it up here, it stays in sync and starts wrapping up down here. But of course it wants to helpfully jump to wherever on the timeline my cursor is. Um, but I've effectively squeezed up the clip now. Control Z to undo, double click to get my focus back here, see the whole clip. If I go into clip mode, um, the main advantage here is that uh, I'm always focused on just the single clip and I don't get confused by anything else that might be on the track, right? If there were another clip on this track up here, right? I'm not confused by that. It doesn't, it doesn't affect me. I can either see this one or I can see this one. Now let's double click to center it again, right? Um, and you'll notice that the timeline ruler is now always relative. When I'm in clip mode, the timeline ruler is always relative to this notion of the start point for the clip is always on a, the, the one, the downbeat. And I go into negative territory this way, and I go into positive territory this way. I personally don't see a whole lot of use for the negative territory. Um, but it's there in case maybe you can think of a use for it. I've never really found a use to care about negative territory. To me, what's far more interesting about working in clip mode is that it allows me to control what's called an offset for the loop. Um, so 
What do we mean by an offset? Remember I said that this drum clip had a little turnaround at the very end? This whole little figure from 4.3 to 5.1 is the turnaround. Let's hear it up here. Okay. What if I want to do a pickup beat, a, a lead in to the full looping of this bar? That can be sometimes confusing to set up in an arranger in any DAW. And every DAW has this notion of this sort of offset or start point for the clip that lets you deal with this in a very useful way. So here's how it works. I'm in the arranger. I'm looking at the full clip. If I loop this right now, it's going to loop the full clip from start to finish. And there's my loop marker right there, that little double dashed line. And you can see that looping gets turned on as soon as I drag it out with this gesture. As soon as I drag it back to its original size with no looping, that loop button for the clip turns off. Okay? But what if I don't want to loop it completely from this point to this point? What if I want to start playing it at this turnaround, and then after that turnaround has played one time as a lead-in, then I want the whole clip to loop over and over and over. That is what clip mode is for, and it's the easiest thing in the world to set up. It's done with this offset property right here, but it's easier to do it visually by dragging this thing. Let's drag this all the way over to here. And here's the turnaround figure I want to start with. And you can see it's going to start right here. And I guess it's a half a bar long. So I'm going to move it up to here so that at the end of, the, of any given bar, like bar one, I'm going to, let's do it in a way that makes more sense. Let's say we've got the first four bars of our song and there's some kind of intro. And then at the end of the four bar intro, I want this lead in figure this turnaround to start and then start looping the whole clip for the rest of the song. So <clears throat> I've set my start time or my offset to 4.3.1, right? 4.1, 2, 3, right? 4.3, bar 4, beat 3. That's where my offset starts. And then I want to turn on loop mode. Now, when I turn on loop mode, watch what happens when I loop this clip out. And let's zoom in a little bit, move over. The full clip, four bars each, right? We'll go to there. So this part of the clip starts at our offset and it plays. And then after that offset has played this section right here between the start and the end marker, it just basically starts playing the loop now because I turned on looping. So it's gonna play the full span of this bar right here. So this is what it sounds like. If I start on bar four. Okay, so this notion of Adjusting the loop and the start offset to get a lead-in figure is very, very useful. And you'll, you'll find lots of uses for this in your projects. It's much more organic sounding than just starting this thing on beat one on bar five, right? And uh, again, this is specifically for this looping behavior. If I, if I have it like this and I do control D, well, that's not very helpful, right? It's just for looping. It's not going to make much sense in this mode if you're working the arrange in the arranger to set up an offset like this. And you'll notice in this clip, I've still got that offset. Um, so it might be a little confusing. Now, if I drag this out up here at this side, I just have blank space, right? Because I'm at in this clip, in this container, this clip container, we've now made this a, a clip that's supposed to be looping. And it's supposed to have an offset, and it's supposed to loop then from the beginning all the way over. But I want you to notice something. See how this looping button has, was turned off when I came over here and did this duplication? Here, well, I turned it off there too. All right, so if I duplicate this, 
Now the looping's on in both of them. And if I drag the looping out, it's going to do its full loop. But the minute I come up here and take this side and drag it, right, it's still acting like a loop, even up here. Wait, let me get it up here. See, it's still, it's not, it's kind of like, <laughs> uh, this is where it gets confusing. All right, let's look at this one more time. Looping's on in the original copy. If I come down anywhere down here in the boat bottom half where this turns into a looping icon, I can loop it out. If I put it up in the top half, it turns into this thing that's just going to drag the edge of the clip out. But it's a little confused because I have looping already turned on over here. I have to go all the way to the very top corner and make sure that I'm in this top bar, this title bar part of the clip to truly drag the clip container out. And even there, see, it wants to, it wants to flip back into looping mode because it knows looping is turned on over here, right? Now, so even up here, if I'm, if I'm way up here, it still wants to loop. It's still trying to be helpful and say, you've got this clip in looping mode, so really no matter where you drag it from, I'm going to loop it for you, whether it's down here where it normally would be or up here. If I turn this off though, then of course up here, it's just going to drag out the edge of the clip container and have a big empty space in here because the audio event just stops. And if we go back to the track mode, you can see it better. Uh, the audio event just stops right here. And here's the full edge of the clip container. Let's go back one. Let's turn looping on again. Let's grab it pretty much anywhere. Even when you think it's not looping, it's really helpfully looping for you. Okay. Um, If it's off though, if this looping button is off, this is where you can get a little confused because the behavior is confusing. I'm not gonna make apologies for Bitwig here. This is a little bit inconsistent now. If looping is off and I have set this up at the clip level to say I want an offset and I want the whole loop to start from the beginning. If this button is off and I come here and I say do looping, see how the looping is only this last section right here and see how it actually changed the loop bar to cover only the span between here and here. I'm sure some designer thought this was helpful behavior. I find it to be confusing behavior. So that's why I'm pointing it out to you. When you're going to do special offset and looping tricks in the arranger view, it's a lot better to make sure that you manually turn looping on first and look at the properties of your loop bar versus the offset marker and then do your looping. And then your looping behavior is going to be what you expect. Okay, and then, you know, you could make this loop one time, go for two bars, uh, and then you could duplicate this out and get the same exact behavior wherever you've duplicated it out and make the same thing happen at another section of your song over here, for example. And you, you have that same lead in and then four bars and four bars, right? It is useful. I, there's definitely times where I have used this behavior. Um, problem is just that until you learn how the looping gets quirky sometimes, right? If you do anything that turns this off, even though you've got looping defined down here inside the clip, right? All of a sudden your looping is going to be messed up again and you're going to go, why the hell? I, I just set it up. I'm looking at this. Oh, I see. When I let go, it, okay, the looping bar is down here. Well, you can kind of fix it by just coming back down here and dragging the loop bar all the way back to the start of the clip. And you can see that it was reflected, the change was reflected up here, right? See how these dotted lines in the header are moving to show where the loop start end actually is? So I could go all the way back to here and then I could keep, you know, dragging this edge out and now I'm gonna get the looping behavior I expect. So just a little quirky thing about this looping button and how Bitwig is trying to be helpful with this one gesture down here. If it messes up what you expect to see in your loop, because like you're in track mode and you can't really see what's going on. Let's see if we can duplicate all this again. I'm going to bring the loop back in. 
looping button is off. I remember I set up the loop to have this offset and to have a loop that's supposed to loop this entire length, right? But for whatever reason, I'm back here in track mode where I can't see this super clearly. And I come down here and I say, okay, let's loop it. And I go, wait a minute, why am I seeing this behavior? This isn't what I expect. When that happens, the trick is to just come into clip mode and say, okay, it, it changed the loop marker for me because of the behavior of this gesture. So let me just take that clip marker and grab it and drag it back over here. And then now I can come back up here and finish, you know, looping the clip the way I want it to. All right, so little tricks and gotchas. You can either pay attention to this button first and make sure it's in the right state before you drag it out to, to get this special lead in and looping behavior or offset and looping behavior. Or if it was off for whatever reason, if it was off and you do a bunch of looping and you don't know why you're getting the, a, a looping behavior that isn't what you expect, just come back here to clip mode. And again, double click anywhere to see the whole clip. Just come back here to clip mode and look at the state of this bar and just fix this bar. You can do it either way. And now it's back to the behavior we would expect and we can you know, adjust the loop to be wherever we want. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the main reason for clip mode in the arranger. Now let's talk about clip mode over in the launcher. It's still basically the same thing here. Let me get rid of that version of the clip. I'm gonna take this clip that's set up like this. I'm gonna drag it over here. And watch what happens. Actually, let me do it this way. Let me expand this out to loop twice. Okay. So we have our half of a bar lead in, two beats of lead in, followed by four bars, and there's two loops of four bars each. Now, if I take this entire clip from my arranger and drag it over into the launcher, watch what happens. In the launcher, it's just one clip. It's just, it's just the full clip the full four bar clip from here to here. It's not the span or length of this entire thing because the launcher is already built to understand a looping and it's already built to understand the notion of I work on one clip at a time. And so over here, it's just the complete four bar clip and you, you don't get any visual indicator in the clip picture itself. You don't get any visual indicator that there's any kind of special offset versus where the clip loops from. You don't get that unless you look over in the inspector. And it's a little unfortunate that they call in the, in the launcher version of, of the clip, the launcher clip, they call the offset the loop start. I'm sorry, they call it the clip start. Um, but over in the arranger, they call this the clip offset. So that's gonna be confusing until you wrap your head around it. It's the same exact information, but here they call it an offset. And over here, 4.3.1 represents the start of the clip. Okay, but it's the same exact behavior. It's basically gonna start on beat three of bar four. And then after it plays to the end of the clip at 5.1, in terms of the, the relative length of the clip in this ruler, right? When it hits 5.1, it's going to stop. And then because it's looping, it's going to start looping again at bar one, beat one right here. And it's going to go for four full bars. And then it's going to have a little auto fade at the end of each loop. So you don't hear any clicks or pops as it loops around from the end to the beginning. And that's what's going on here. So if we, if we flip over to the launcher mode and see how this gets grayed out, because now I've clicked something over here, I basically click stop. So now we're going to hear what this thing sounds like if I play start. Now remember, I actually don't remember, let me show you. I have my launch quantization for the launcher to be always quantized to a bar at a time. So when I click start, we're going to see this blink for the first two beats of the bar until it hits this. Uh, it's going to blink for basically two beats here. 
and then it'll start playing from here, and then it'll loop around to the beginning, like so. Let's stop it and do that again. So, and you can see this is the arranger just keeps running. <laughs> it's kind of annoying. If you turn this off, you don't care really that that's doing that. Um, so watch. One, two. Okay. Let's try that again. See, because this is running, it's actually waiting for a full bar to roll around here so that it's in sync with whatever might be happening in the arranger because you can actually play the arranger and clips over here at the same time you're playing clips here. Uh, God, should I show you that? No, I don't want to confuse you. Uh, let me let me just stop the transport and then it'll be a little more obvious. So let's go back to one, one. So one, ah, come on one more time. Back to bar one. We're going to let this run, and I'm going to start it like right after a new bar starts up here. Okay, see how it quantized itself to start on the second beat of the next bar? One more time. Okay, so that's what this clip mode is for and this looping stuff. It's all about setting up your, your offset and then where the loop starts. That's really the main purpose. It's really geared around the uh, clip launcher, but it's also useful sometimes, depending on what you're doing. Let me click uh, this button to get all our focus back on the arranger view again. Um, Sometimes this trick is useful to use even in the arranger. So the other thing that can be useful, let's go all the way back to the beginning. Let's turn off looping. Let's just drag this clip out. Oops. I need to come back to here and set the start of the clip again. Um, let's put this back on a start of a downbeat. The other thing that this clip view or clip mode is useful for, again, is cutting out some noise and some static when you have lots of clips of different types on the same track. As we talked about when we were talking about zooming, if I want to look at this clip, I click it and we see, if I double click it rather, we see the whole clip here. If I double click this one, we see this whole clip here and so on. Right? If I'm in track mode, I can actually have independent zoom and see them all down here and do things like, again, expand out the length of this container for the clip and drag this event over in here and then play games with the event. Like, I don't know, let's reverse the whole thing and so on, right? You can play all sorts of games and make complex multi-clips and then it's just one clip. Um, but sometimes you're in here working with a clip and you're zooming in on it, and then you're zooming out. And we'll go down here and we'll do the same thing here and we'll zoom out. And you just keep getting like, you keep getting jumped out to maybe a bigger view where you're seeing all these clips, right? Like if I come in here and I zoom in and then I zoom out, I'm back to all these clips. And of course you can use the shift to zoom and this, uh, actually let's zoom in closer. Like I can be here looking at one clip in the track mode and I can come and say, let me look closely at that. And now let me zoom back out to where I was zoomed in before, right? That's one trick for managing this, but 
Um, sometimes it's a lot easier instead of working in this mode to just say, let me look at clip mode and focus on only the one clip I want to look at. And there's nothing else on here to distract me or mess me up, right? I'm just purely working with one, well, however many audio events are inside the selected clip. If I come over here again uh, and double click, you can see I have two audio events inside this clip. You can see here's the clip start, here's the clip end, two audio events. I can do micro adjustments and crank them into each other and do a crossfade. Uh, do a crossfade between them, like so, right? Uh, we'll talk about crossfades in another video. Point being, sometimes it's good to just keep your focus in one clip, and you're not necessarily using it to determine where and how it loops and where and how it starts with an offset, right? Sometimes it's not your focus. You just want to keep it simple and just focus on the audio event and doing deal things with the onsets or the stretching or uh, pitch and format of your chosen um, of your chosen warping mode. Like right now, I have a warp mode that has. Um, a format value. So format would let me actually tweak that format value across the length of the clip. Um, stuff like that. Sometimes you just want to work inside a single clip and that's another good reason to use clip. But just be aware you can always go back and see all the clips and do things with all the clips by uh, going back to track mode. And then you can come back in and just again work with the clip itself in isolation. Right, decide where it starts and ends, decide where it loops if you care about that, um, and so on. Okay, now the next thing we want to talk about is some tips and tricks for seeing and understanding the relationship of the audio events inside of a clip to the clip itself. Because this can be a little hard to see sometimes, right? If I, if I, was working on a project. Well, let's close some of these other ones. If I was working on a project and I come back to this a week later and I look at this waveform and I go, what the hell's going on here? And I click this clip to open it up in the event editor and I go, okay, well, I see I have three different audio events in it. Obviously, they've all got different names, especially if I zoom in, that becomes more obvious. But where do these audio events start and end? All right, I'm, I'm inside here, what's going on? What's the relationship of these audio events to each other? Are they overlapping each other? Which can be a really important question when it comes to crossfading. Talk about that in a later video. But right now I just wanna show you some tips and tricks for how to figure out where the audio events start and end versus where the clip starts and ends. I wish there were easier ways to do this, there's not. It's just something you have to learn the few little ways to like quickly check and see. So one of the ways, one of the best ways to check and see is to go into clip mode and zoom out so you can see the entire clip and all the events. And you'll notice this marker tells me where the clip itself starts. This tells me where the clip itself ends. And I have a slightly better idea of what's going on with the audio events here. I can see, for example, that this audio event is pretty long and extends past the right boundary of the clip. But even this isn't perfect. And I can see that this audio event extends past the boundaries of this clip. But this still isn't perfect. And let me show you why. I'm going to kind of slide these audio events around so we can take a close look. If I, if I put my cursor up in the border, the top title bar of an audio event, and I drag it, see how there's still more of that audio event that was hiding under there, but I couldn't see that, right? And let's see if there's anything in this direction. Nope. See, I can drag inward, but I stop cold right here. So that's clearly the actual end of the audio event. And this is the actual end of the audio event. But inside the clip, the way it was when I first opened up this project, this had been pulled in a little bit. And so I know at the very least that the start of the audio event is out past the beginning of the clip itself, but I had to fiddle around with the borders of the event to see where the actual event starts and ends, right? 
So this is a little awkward. It's a little clumsy, and it's even clumsier in this mode because I can do the same thing here and see where it actually ends by going until it stops, right? Um, same thing on this side. I can go inward, but it stops when I go here. But is this really the end of the clip? Let's drag, let's drag the clip marker out further, and you'll see, oh, there was more hiding here. Can you see that? I'm here, but if I drag the clip border out, oh, there's the real beginning of this audio event, right? So this can be confusing as hell at first. How do you see or understand that you're only looking at part of an audio event? How, how exactly do you do that? Like, let's drag this clip border all the way in, okay? Hey, there was a thing here and it's gone now. Did it disappear entirely? I don't know. Let's go back to clip mode. Wait a minute. I'm looking at a single clip. I'm looking at this clip. Here's two other audio events that I don't even see anymore. They're hiding way over here. And I don't even know if I'm looking at the real beginning and end of those. Okay, that truly does seem to be the beginning of that one. But if I scooch this one over and drag this side, oops. Well, no, that was the end of that one. See how it's just gray and empty here? Let me zoom in. So that was the full audio event here. What about this one? Nope, there's no more on this side. And there's no more on that side. So that was the full audio event there. So those are good. But this one definitely has some stuff on this side. And it has some stuff on the... Well, see, again. Well, there we go. Yeah, that's where it ends here. So when you're in track mode, it can be really hard to tell what's what, right? When you're in clip mode, it's easier to see what's really in the clip, even if it's just not visible up in the arranger or over in track mode. This is how you actually tell the full contents of the clip, even the parts you can't see. And as I drag this over, now we can see those other audio events, right? And as I drag this over, now we can see the audio events here. And we can see all of the audio event, all of it, right? Start to finish. But again, sometimes it can be tricky because if, if, if I've taken any of these audio events and, and dragged them inward and made them smaller, this isn't going to give you any clues that there's more hiding there, right? And then there's another wrinkle. There's a gesture, we haven't talked about this yet, but I'll just preview it really quickly. A really useful gesture for editing is to slide the waveforms around inside the clip. You do that by putting your cursor anywhere in the middle of the clip, holding Alt till it changes to that shape, and then click and drag back and forth. So I can tell that there's several waveforms or several events. And if I let go, see how they shifted down here? If I drag them back this way, see how they shift? If I drag them over here, see how they shift? So they shift, but I'm not seeing the full waveform in each event. I'm only seeing what's windowed by my currently set start and end of each one of these. Like, see, that one's truncated a little bit. I cut it in half. So there's more hiding there, but you won't see it unless you come in here and drag it out, right? So I have never found an easy way around this, like looking at a clip cold and saying, am I seeing the entire audio event here? Is this the entire audio event? Is this the entire audio event? Sliding it just slides the events the, the define start and end of each event. It just slides their relative position to the parent clip. That's all it does. So if you have a single, a single clip like this one, you know, you drag it in and you look at it, you slide your audio and you go, okay, cool. Let's start it on that thing. And we'll just make it this short little clip. And you do that, right? That's a very common and quick editing technique, but it's hard to tell what you've actually done unless you look in clip mode, because in track mode, it just looks exactly like it does up here. Um, 
and let's make sure we're focused on the right one. It just looks like this, right? You don't know that there's stuff over here and here unless you go in clip mode. And even here in clip mode, if you've ever modified or edited the length and borders of the audio event, you won't even know here. Like if I come in here and actually drag this in to match for whatever reason, well now I'm never gonna know even if I come in clip mode unless I come back here and test. Is there more audio hiding on this side? Is there more audio hiding on this side? And you'll see why that question of whether or not there's audio hiding on either side can become important later, especially when we talk about crossfading. I'm not gonna get into that in this video, but one quick and dirty test you can do is just come up here and hold down Alt and slide it and see, see up here, you're not gonna see if there's any more waveform because up here, I'm literally moving whatever my currently defined audio event is, right? Let's put it back in the center again. If I come down here though, and let's get out of this format mode because that grid's annoying. Um, if I come down here and hold Alt, check this out. Oh, now I'm seeing that there's a bunch of waveform off on this side because I can slide it this way. So that tells me there's audio hiding over here. But if I drag, sorry, if I drag a certain amount this way, it stops cold and doesn't go any farther. So that tells me I'm at the very end of the audio event here and there isn't anything else past this point, right? There's just nothing to do. So here is the one true shortcut I found for investigating a clip and figuring out what's what. Let's come back over here to this one because remember this was the confusing one. So I say to myself, self, is this the full audio event for this particular, is this the full sample waveform that's hiding inside this audio event? I could drag these out to test, but I don't want to. I don't want to mess up my clip that I've set up. I just want to test. I want to know. So the trick I found is this. Don't do it up here, because if you move things up here, you're just shifting the event containers around inside the clip. But if you come down into the event editor, and let's snap focus back here. It doesn't matter whether I'm in track mode or clip mode for this test, right? So you can work either way. If I come down into the editor and I put my cursor inside the event, somewhere inside the event, hold down Alt and just test by dragging in either direction. I can't drag this way anymore, it doesn't move, but I can drag this way. So what this tells me, and then I let go, and it doesn't matter where I let go or where, you know, I don't have to remember anything because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let go and then just do Control Z to undo that move I did. Everything's back exactly the way I left it, right? And what that little experiment told me is there's no more clip hiding out here. There's no more sample hiding out here past this edge of the event, but there is sample hiding out here. Let's do it again. Alt, drag to the right, nothing happens. That means there's nothing out here. I'm at the beginning of the uh, of this sample inside this audio event. But if I hold Alt and drag this way and I see the thing sliding, now I know that there's sample hiding out here. And I can just get back exactly where I was by doing Control Z to undo. And I haven't affected or changed a thing. So this is the quick test, slide, drag, decide if it's telling you, you know, whether there's more sample out here or more sample out here. And then if you're, and then just do control Z to undo your move, right? Slide, control Z, slide, control Z. It goes right back where it was. So I can do this test on every event inside the clip. Where's this one? Hold down alt, shift, shift. Yeah, I'm seeing it move a little bit. So clearly there's something. Where is that something? I'm not sure yet. Let me just move a little bit and do Control Z to get back where I was. And then I can test a little more carefully. Let's drag to the right. Nope, nothing happens when I drag to the right. So that means this is truly the start of the audio event. Let's hold down Alt and drag left this time. Oh, it moved. So clearly, Control Z, that means there's a little bit of sample hiding past this edge of the event. 
Let's try it over here in this one. Alt, slide to the right. Nothing happens, so I know that this is a start. Alt, slide this way. Oh, yep, it's moving. Control Z. And now I know that there's a bunch of sample hiding out here. And again, this may seem a little uh, academic at this point, but trust me, when we get to crossfading, this trick will be a lot more useful. So what I'm trying to show you here is just how to see, are you looking at the whole audio event? Where does the audio event start and end compared to the actual sample, right? If I do this, the minute I do this, I could control Z to undo, but it's like, it's a whole lot of tests in either direction. It's a lot easier to just do Alt, jiggle and go, yep, I'm not seeing the whole event. I'm seeing only part of it. And then control Z to undo, right? And then you can start making decisions about, okay, what's hiding over here or what's hiding over here. But undo is your friend when you're trying to remember what's what or understand what's what. You can do any kind of move and then undo it. Um, so I think that's all I want to say for this video. We'll see you in the next video.